Okay, okay. Thank you, Peter. Let me share the screen. Actually, I have my slides ready on my screen, so you can stop sharing so that I can share my screen, please. Uh, sharing, sharing, sharing. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, thank you, Peter, for a great presentation. So as Peter suggested, we can communicate between the blockchains, but how about the off-chain world on Clayton? But before getting to that, let me get a quick introduce. My name is Calvin. I'm currently the Oracle Network team lead. Also, I'm a blockchain enthusiast. I've been in the industry since 2016 with all the bears and bulls. Also, I'm a content creator. So I run my YouTube channel where I talk about blockchain and blockchain development. And if you have some specific question about GameFi, I'm sure I can help you with that. I have my course on Teachable, which is the GameFi 101 with like 5,000 enrollments for now. So before we start it, let's get to let's get to the very beginning of blockchain so blockchain is a storage technology and nothing fascinating about that so with other storage technology like databases mysql postgrid blah 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 data is stored into table and the table are connected to each other and blockchain is stored data in blocks and all those blocks is chained together. That is why it's called blockchain. So nothing, nothing really special about that. So at the core, which is a storage technology, it has its advantages and also disadvantages. And we talk about the advantages of blockchain all the time with this immutability, its transparency. But let's talk about the disadvantages of the blockchain technology, which is which is weak randomness. And in the blockchain world, there's nothing at call at the randomness. So if you want to like dive deeper into why blockchain have weak randomness and also how to exploit it, you can go to this link, which I will put in the description of the live. Uh, this is like, like a four video and each video will like 30 minutes long where I show you why blockchain have weak randomness and how to exploit weak randomness in blockchain. But in the scope of this presentation, let's just assume that there is no randomness in blockchain. Also, with the blockchain world, we cannot bring off-chain data on-chain. So if you work with like programming language like JavaScript, you have something like Access where we can send an HTTP request and then they have a HTTP response where we get some like other sources of information into your application. But in the blockchain case, there is no off-chain data. If you are programming with Solidity or Rust or Move or C or any languages that support blockchain smart contract programming, there is nothing as a sending an HTTP request and then get an HTTP response to get the data from external sources. So that is the two biggest disadvantages of the blockchain technology. And that is exactly why all blockchain needs some Oracle. And Oracle Network is an Oracle service that runs on the Clayton blockchain. We are fully compatible with Clayton. Uh, I have to admit that we take a lot of concept from Chainlink, which is a big company and the standard for Oracle. And we optimize it. Also, we twitch it so that it fits the best to work on the Clayton blockchain. Also, we have VRF, Request Response and Data Feeds. VRF will solve the problem of the weak randomness so we can call and you can get a randomness properly on the Clayton blockchain. Request response is you can get any data from any sources of API and bring it to your DAP. And we have we also have data fits, which is like we all constantly fit the data to the blockchain and you can read it immediately. And with Oracle service, we support for mainnet and also service chains on the blockchain. And we accept payment in native token, which is the clay token. 
So you can start to integrate your DApp right away. You don't have to go on chain and buy another third party token and then send it, blah, blah, blah. With Clayton and Oracle Network, you can start building right away. And we are very flexible with payment and subscription plan. We are audited by very chance. So you can actually believe that all the smart contract has been audited and there is no security risk by very chance. And because we are new, we are a new team on Clayton, on Clayton, so we are always eager to listen and we will support you so that you can have your DAP up and running. So let's talk about VRF, which is verifiable and random number. And you can, you can click on the link or you can scan the QR below. We have a GitHub repo in Visionai VRF consumer. And actually, let me show you the GitHub. Let's get our hands dirty and try to make a VRF request. So if you come to the link, it will bring you to this repo, which is our VRF consumer repo, which where we show you how to request and how to like um, read a VRF. So you can follow all the instruction below and to do all the coding, but this is boring. The thing I want to bring up here is I'm going to bring up my remix and with this remix, you can click on these three lines and then you click clone and then you just paste the whole GitHub repo in here and it will load the repo into the remix console. And because I already loaded, so I'm going to go to VRF and then I'll go to contracts and I'll go to VRF consumer. You know, in order to, to request a VRF, First of all, you need to inherit from the VRF consumer base. And then let's take a look at this specific function, which is the request random work. So this one is, this, fun this function is the function that you need to call when you need a VRF. So in order to request, you need the key hash, you need the account ID, you need callback gas limit, and the number of words that you want to request. So the key hash, to get the key hash, you can actually here at Oracle Network and you go to account. And this is on Baobab. So I'm going to uh, do a demonstration on the test network Baobab. Because I am an old and frugal man, don't want to spend clay on Cypress. So we have the key hash here, which is the identifier for the Bizonai provide. So if you input, you request the random work with this key hash, Bizonai will spit back the random number. And you have the coordinator address here. So this is the key hash. And what do we need? We need the account ID. So how can we have the account ID? It's simple, you go to this page, connect your wallet and make sure you have some test full set on clay, which is echo T clay here. I got a lot of those and you click create account and click it, create account. And then we confirm. And we just wait for the transaction to be mined. Okay, and click confirm. And after you create the accounts, you need to fund it. So in this case, let's say I'll try to fund it with 10 clay and I add fund into it. And I click confirm. And the next step after you create the account and then you fund it, the next step is to add consumer. So we need to specify what specific contract address gonna be spend the funds in this account. So I'm gonna add consumer or you just do it later. And if you click the refresh button and then you scroll down, you will see that I just created an account uh, 220. And the nice thing about this page is that you, they have all the red and green dots. So the green dot is this account ready to go. So we already created, you already funded, you already add consumer, which is three consumers here. And with this account, this is red because you created it you fund it, but there is no consumer. So it is not ready to go. So by looking at this, you know, you can see what account is available. And if I click here, you can add consumer here. Why I cannot add? Yeah, 
you can see the information of the account here actually let's try it so i go back to my remix make sure that my compiler is right compile it and then i will try to deploy it and to deploy you need the address of the coordinator so you deploy with the constructor which is the coordinator so where do we get the coordinator we get it here by get back to the account page you see vrf coordinator address so i'm going to copy this back to here paste it here and then i'm going to deploy oops i need to switch to injected provider metamask click deploy and then i click confirm okay and we are here so we already deploy this smart contract vrf consumer so i copy account come back here get to my new account and i'm gonna add consumer so click here paste it in here And let's wait for the transactions. Let me refresh my account and you can see the consumer is here. So theoretically, we should be able to request a random work. So with the random work, we need the key hash ID. We got it. Callback gas limit is the way that you specify the gas to use for the fulfill function so depends on how complicated you want our oracle to fulfill with the vrf you will put the callback gas limit here but i'm not going to dive deep into that so let's get back to the account page and then i'll copy the key hash put it here key hash account if i remember correctly 220 Call back gas limit 500,000 is more than enough, and I'm gonna request one random word. And I click transact, and I click confirm. So during this time, we will send, we will, the smart contract will emit an event, and our off chain oracle will catch that event. We process that event to generate a proof, and then we submit that proof back to the smart contract. So why is it called a verifiable random number? Because we don't submit the random value right away so that in case someone intercepts and they can catch that transactions with the proof, they cannot generate the, the random work themselves. And if I click as random work, it says it's already like one. So I have a random work. And that is how we can request a random word from Oracle network and with random work we can build many cases uh, and if i let me come back to my slide and let's jump right away at the bottom you can i will put all these links in the description below so this is one product that we build uh, from the front end api and back end smart contract blah 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 we build with vrf on baobab you can scan the qr code or follow the link for the code this is called the Flipcoin game that you can actually play here on Baobab. So you connect your wallet, you select, you want to flip the coin with heads or tail. You select the number of clay that you can put on the bed and then you click flip. And then it will like use the VRF service to flip the coin. So if it's, we randomize the number, if it's a odd number is the head and it's the other way around is the, the tail. So you click confirm and then you wait for it. We wait for the randomness to happen and then we get back the result that you double your three clay or you just lost it all. And it seems like I'm really lucky here. So I have double my free clay, it becomes six clay. And if you click here, you can see all the transactions that are happening on chain. 
which is right here. So we do all the interactions with the sets of smart contract from Oracle Network, gets account from the prepayment increase now. If you want to be more detailed, you can actually click here and you can you can check everything on chain. And then you can come to the reward and then click the claim uh, button to claim the clay that you win. And if you lost, of course, you lost your clay and the clay get locked in the smart contract forever. This is a really simple game. But if I remember co correctly on Solana, there's one game called Degen Conflicts, which works exactly the same. And they got some somewhere around like $50 million locked in their smart contract. So it's really interesting how to build with VRF. Okay, let's get back to the slide and we get back to request response. So it's not it's not you can it's not just that you can request a VRF, but you can actually request any API. So any API we will send the request and then our Oracle network will fetch the data and then we will come back and then fetch the data for you. So actually let's get back to my remix console and then I switch to request response consumer. So if you want to load this, you can just come to our GitHub repo. So you come to Vision I, and then we have the three consumer repos separately. VRF consumer, which I just show you, and then request respond consumer, also data feeds consumer. So you click request respond, you can copy the code and load it directly into this GitHub. So you go to contracts, let's see what's happening in here. So in this case, I want to get the Bitcoin price from the Coinbase API. So that is how you create the request data function. And with this request data, you just need the account ID and the callback gas limit. Actually, let's try it right now. So let's make sure that we compile it. And then we deploy it with the address of the coordinator. And let's get back to this. We have request respond and coordinator address. I'm gonna copy this and paste it here, click deploy. Oops, I forgot to get back to my injective web three. Deploy again. And I click confirm. And yep, it's already deployed. And then I copy the smart contract, come back to my account, and then I'm gonna add consumer. So I'm gonna add another consumer here. Confirm. And let's wait for the transactions. Yep, it is done. So if we hit the refresh button, you should see the smart contract address here. You also have like those nice statistic, how many clays spent the last four few months from the which addresses. Okay, get back to this and then I come back. So the response, it is at the default value, which is zero. And I'm gonna make the request now with the request data. So I put the account ID. Zero, and then I put the callback gas limit. It's more than enough to transact. And then we already send the transactions. Let's wait for the Oracle network to come back to off-chain data and grab the data, and then come back and fulfill the off-chain data into this smart contract. It's not yet, just wait for it. Just wait for it. Yeah, and we get the data, which is the Bitcoin price of today, of the latest round in the aggregate contract. In this, um, sorry, uh, from this Coinbase API. So today pride is 33,000. Wow, this shit is really high today. And that is how you can call any API. 
and then you can fit the data of this external API into your smart contract using our Oracle network. So that is like VRF and request respond for the for those two services. You need to pay. And actually we have another services which call the data fits and it is free. So you can like use it anytime you want or we call it intermediate read. So with data fits we as the name suggests, we constantly fit the data to the blockchain. For example, the price of BTC and USDT. If you click on the aggregator address, you can see that we have our infrastructure to submit the Bitcoin price every 30 seconds. So one minute, we, you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five submits here. So we're constantly updating the Bitcoin price on chain. And how to read it? You can read it directly from the proxy address. So let me try it right now. So this is the proxy address that I just put here. If you click the decimal, this BTC and USDT. This address is like 73 AC, and you can see it's right here. So this is exactly the one. And you can just read. And this is reading the value from the blockchain. So you don't have to pay anything. You don't, you don't even have to pay for gas. You can just read it by calling the get latest round data. You click here and you get the latest round data. You have the answer is like 3389, really big number in way. And also you get the round ID. So we already submitted to this ridiculous round, which is really, really often because we submit the price every 15 seconds and you have all of these data already available on chain. So whenever you want to use it, you just come to the proxy address and then read it right away. And let me show you on the GitHub rip on the Remix console. So we'll come here with the data feeds and you can clone it by go here, use an eye and then data feed consumer. So we have this consumer ready, copy the code and then you will see how to implement this so we need a constructor in the constructor you input the aggregator proxy address let's get back to deploy compile it then deploy so i want to read the price of bitcoin so i'm gonna hear and actually we are on baobab so you need to scroll down scroll down scroll down and we are on baobab we copy the proxy address here and then we paste it here and click deploy and we have the data feed consumer so if we click the get latest data also i forgot to change this once again let's do that once again click confirm and we have the data fits deploy and we can call the get latest data so this is my implementation of the data fits you can call the get latest data from the aggregator proxy and then you can update the state of this smart contract so we have to pay the gas which is for updating this value but if you just read and or you don't want to integrate it into your smart contract but you can do something like off-chain read then it's free. So we get the latest data, we get the round ID, we get the decimal, and then we get the answer speed back here. So that is how you can integrate our data feeds here. And if you if you have a specific data that you want to report on chain, you can click go to Oracle Network and data feed page and click the request data feeds. And if we receive your request and we see that uh, everybody is need in need of this data on Clayton. So we will run our infrastructure and we we'll constantly submit the requested data onto Clayton. And one last thing we can actually, one last thing I want to show you is with data feeds, we can actually build something like, like this DAP. So let me get back to the slides. If you follow the links, you can build a binary option DAP by reading the data uh, from data feeds and you don't have to pay any gas because it's free so you can this is as a reference 
for you guys to to build on data feeds and let me get back to it and just a just a quick disclaimer uh, binary options is illegal in certain countries so this is just for reference purpose so let me get back to the data feeds so the idea behind this tab is really simple so you're gonna bet on the price so you see all the pair of price here is fetched from directly from our aggregator proxy so if you want to bet on the BTC you can see it's directly fetch the data from our data feed and if you want to bet that the price will go up after 30 seconds you can click start and then we start the countdown and after 30 seconds we can read again from the data feed and at this time the data is already updated and we can compare with the previous price and if you this goes up then you can win five points and if you go down you lose your point and so the concept is really simple and you can the code is open source so if you want to build something like this there is always you can reference to this repo and i'm going to make sure that we put in the description and yes the price goes up so i already win so you see the bitcoin price bnb and all the data feeds you can integrate it in here and also what i'm going to share because we still have like three minutes left so if you want to be tricky and you want to go to our github repo let me switch to the vrf and request respond consumer so we have consumer here so we in the script folder we prepare some amazing script for you and you can do something like get the account you can create and fund your account directly by running the scripts you can get the estimate uh, um, estimate the service fee so if we if we're wondering how much it will cost for one VRF request on Cypress at the moment, you can run the script and we can estimate how much this is cost. So for now, with the current configuration, you will put two clay on Clayton. And there's a bunch of script. So feel free to just clone our open source re repo and play around with it. Mm, what else I want to show you? And I think that's it for these demonstrations. So in total, you can use VRF, you can use Request Response, or you can read from any of the data feeds that we are running. Thank you guys for listening. Oh, awesome.